343 have recently just concluded their Season 4 preview stream, which gave us an in-depth look at a lot of the content that we can be expecting in this upcoming season. Since I have spoken about a lot of this stuff already today, I'm just going to be focusing on the Battle Pass and the changes to the store. So if you do enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new here. Also, let me know if you're excited for Season 4, because I know after this, I sure am. Anyway, without wasting any more of your time, let's jump straight in. First things first, we have a brand new purchase bonus. Last season, players earned the Red Steel Splinter Coating as a purchase bonus for buying the Battle Pass. And this time around, we have a purchase bonus on the Battle Pass and also the Halo Championship bundles. We've already seen the purchase bonus with the HCS bundles itself. You get a pretty nice Battle Rifle model, and that doesn't matter which one of those bundles you buy, you get the Battle Rifle model with any of them. As for the Battle Pass itself, you get the Assault Rifle Flashbind Weapon model and the Genesis Bloom Armor Coating for all of your armor cores, as well as bonus match XP throughout the entirety of Season 4. We can also still buy the Premium Pass bundle, which gives you access to 100 XP grants, which gets you straight to level 25. And these, I definitely would argue, are some pretty solid purchase bonuses. And I'm assuming the coating and the AR model are the ones that I would have shown on screen when I was talking about those. If that is the case, they look pretty cool. As for the Battle Pass itself, it does look like the UI is a little bit different, although I'm not entirely sure. Uh, straight away, you can see some pretty cool things. We get a chest piece at Tier 2, a wrist attachment at Tier 3. Uh, these are obviously for the hazmat core. The first free cosmetic is an armor coating for the Mark 7 at Tier 4. And at Tier 5, you get one of the new hazmat helmets, this one being the Mark 6, the Mark 6 helmet for hazmat, which is already my favorite for the core. I don't need to see the rest. I have seen the other ones in the Battle Pass, and I definitely like this more than any of those this helmet looks great it's also worth noting that the chest pieces the wrist attachments and like this doesn't just apply to hazmat but all of the new mark 7 stuff they do apply your armor coating which is great as far as i'm aware when it comes to the mark 7 and the other course the older cosmetics still don't apply your coating which is unfortunate but that's because they were designed to be gray whether that's the right decision or not, I'm not here to tell you. But at least going forward, we know that the coatings will be applied to those newer chess pieces, which will probably make some of those much more popular. There's around 180 total rewards in the pass. There is still emblems, XP boosts, challenge swaps, etc. But this shouldn't really be a surprise to anyone. There is going to be a lot I skipped through here, but one thing I do need to bring up is it does look like you still have to unlock the coating separately for every core, but I think every coating that's in the Battle Pass is there for every weapon and every armor core, which does include the Fracture ones like Yoroi, Eagle Strike. I could be incorrect, I might have seen it wrong myself, and it is kind of annoying that you still have to unlock it individually for the different stuff, but I think they said that going forward, I, again, I could be mishearing things because it seems to be uh, that sometimes some of this stuff just isn't explained very well, but I think in future seasons you will only have to unlock it once. Unfortunately, it's just the way the game was designed in the first place, so it's been a bit of a, of a hurdle for 343 to get past that, as much as that is a shame. But regardless, it's safe to say some of these coatings look great. I'm a big fan of this Midnight one, it looks great on the hazmat core. There's also some really cool shoulder pads here for the Mark 7, and the first Mark 7 helmet we get at tier 15 is the Talon helmet, which looks kind of like the pilot helmet from Halo 3. Not the pilot spawn helmet, but the helmet that the pilots wear. And it also kind of gives me Vulture vibes, the Spider-Man Homecoming version of Vulture specifically. There's also a really nice biohazardous kill effect. We unlock our second helmet for the Mark 7 at tier 27, and this one is actually free. This is the Trend Lock helmet, and this one's decent. Definitely not a favourite, at least not yet, but I'm glad this one's free because it looks pretty cool. At tier 30, we get the Minion helmet, I mean the Scarbank helmet. Scarbnik, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It's a very silly looking helmet, but I do actually like this one. Also, again, throughout, some of this footage will be skipped through, but at tier 50, we do get the BR-75 Hascon weapon model, or weapon geo as they referred to it in the stream, and this looks great. Across the purchase bonus and the battle pass itself, we get a total of three weapon models. You get one for purchasing it, one at tier 50, and one at tier 100, which does mean most of the ones that showed up in the trailer are on the store, which is unfortunate, but at least there is some really, really good ones for free. At tier 55, we get possibly one of the weirdest helmets, which is the Armet helmet. Someone in my Discord server actually made the comparison that this kind of looks like Duraludon from Pokemon. And yeah, I, I definitely see that. 
And we definitely see plenty of other like pieces like shoulder pads, wrist attachments, various other things. And again, most of these do apply your coating. I think all of them do actually. There's a helmet attachment for the helmet. There's a lot of really cool things here. Some really nice coatings, some really nice pieces of armor. The hazmat core is definitely growing on me really quickly. Speaking of which, they did actually explain a little bit of the lore behind the hazmat suit and that it was originally not designed for Spartans. However, they then designed a Spartan version, which is much more intended for those more hazardous environments and actually has more AI counter defenses than most other sets of Mjolnir. I'm really glad they did give us a little bit of a lore explanation as to the purpose of the hazmat suit. Obviously, it also gives the artists a lot of freedom to design some cool cosmetics. And with the game being live service, it is also designed to just sell cool cosmetics to players. But that nice little bit of lore that came alongside it does definitely explain the purpose of the hazmat core. And although I had no issue with it regardless, I know a few people in my comments definitely did. As far as credits go, I think we just get the 1000 again, just like every other season except season 1. I will reiterate, I do wish we had a little bit more, maybe like 1,300 and let players unlock 300 of those for free. That's not really going to get you much from the store or anything, but at least you'd be able to work your way through these different battle passes, get some credits for free and eventually be able to buy one or be able to buy some stuff off the store. I think there is less helmets in this pass than the prior ones, but anyway, at tier 95, you get the Oberon helmet for hazmats. This one looks okay. Just back pedaling a little bit, but I love the splatter line visor you get at tier 93. That looks gorgeous. At tier 99, you get the Signal Tech Deep Eye Helmet Attachment for the Hazmat Core, and this, I think, can be used on multiple helmets too, which is a, definitely a win. And at tier 100, you unlock a helmet, which is free, by the way, a free helmet for the Hazmat Core, and a Bulldog Weapon model. And that is just a brief summary of the Battle Pass. Overall, definitely seems pretty solid. Definitely think it's better than Season 3's. Not too sure how I'm going to stack it next to Season 1 or 2's yet, but definitely a solid pass. The Bulldog model you get at tier 100 looks gorgeous. And obviously, I imagine there'll be other, like, plenty of other free cosmetics across the five different events we'll get this season. Which could include more weapon models, could include more helmets for hazmat for Yori for the Mark 7. But now moving away from the battle pass over to the store, you'll notice the store has had a little bit of a UI overhaul, and it looks pretty good. Straight away, we can see where you view the battle pass, the Halo Championship offers, and also our first new super bundle, Hazmat Haven. This contains an armor set for Hazmat, an armor set for the Mark 7, and also another bundle which is a weapon set which gives you two weapon models, a weapon coating, and an armor effect. Because this is owned though, we don't get to see the price. I have a feeling it's going to be somewhere between the 3,000 to 4,000 credit margin. And if you buy the super bundle, it does have some exclusive content like an armor effect and a weapon charm. Well, it's a mythic effect set, but still. You will notice alongside the super bundle, all of these bundles are there individually too. So if there's a specific set you want from the Super Bundle, you don't have to wait for it to be broken up individually. You can just get the bundle you want. It looks like there'll be four bundles alongside whatever the Super Bundle is. You can see the Spring Growth Bundle and the Grendel Armor Set, which actually says it's on sale, reduced by 22%, but we don't actually see what the price tag is. But if that is the case and some of the Season 3 stuff comes back on sale, that'd be great. Challenge Boost and Swap Packs are still there, which is, again, understandable. So we still have five slots on the store. I do wish it was a little bit higher, but I guess that isn't really all that important with the catalog system. And I'm curious if the Super Bundle slot will actually always be a Super Bundle or if it'll sometimes be something else entirely. We don't get to see the armor sets properly, unfortunately, but from what we do see, they look kind of interesting. Toolmaster looks fine. The Mark 7 set kind of looks like a Bionicle. Like the chest piece, like the shoulder pads. Not a huge fan of the helmet though. But anyway, that basically sums up everything. We do see a little bit of the HCS store stuff, but that doesn't really look any different. This time around, it's just a few weapon coatings and you do get the battle rifle model as a purchase bonus. But that sums up all the stuff I wanted to go over today. Let me know if you're excited for season four down in the comments. Let me know if there's anything here particularly that excites you. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.